I know Wayne Campbell was a character you played even before Saturday Night Live. How did Wayne's world come about? I was uh, a heavy metal kid in the suburbs of Toronto. And uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I created the suburbs of Toronto. Thank you very much. <laughs> when I came to New York City, I, uh, I saw that, you know, with Manhattan Cable right next to CNN was the Robin Bird Show. I don't know if anybody oh, yeah. from New York. I did not create the Robin Bird Show. Um, and I became obsessed with cable access, so I, I, uh, I wanted to do a cable access show. He'd had film of it before. Like yeah, I did it on Canadian TV as yep. well. Uh -huh. It was called Wayne's Power Minute. It was on a show called It's Only Rock and Roll on, uh, on the Seab. Lauren had, thankfully, thank you, Mr. Michaels, <laughs> cast me on Saturday Night Live, and we had our cast together, and then Mike came in. And he was the young upstart and uh, seemed, looked about 13. And uh, I was in my mid-40s at that point. And um, <laughs> Mike asked me to be, be his uh, sidekick on his sketch, Wayne's World, and um, play this, this character. And Mike just said, Garth loves, loves Wayne. He digs him. I didn't think they were going to release the movie. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think they liked it. Um, uh, the initial feedback when I handed in the script, uh, Lauren said uh, that somebody there said, I don't get it, was the, <laughs> was the note, which I've never forgotten. Hi, Arthur. And then... Uh, it, was, it was meant I, to be encouraging. Yeah, no, I, uh, and trust me, I took it as that, yeah, yeah. you know. It inspired such confidence. And when they called me, Lauren called me, I was over the room, going, oh my God, I hope I can get this gig, you know? Mm -hmm. And Lauren and I had known each other before I even started Saturday Night Live. The first time I met everybody was when uh, Lauren asked me to host the very first time, and, and I'll never forget walking into the writing room, to Mike's writing room, and Mike saying, I have these two sketches that, that I'm thinking of doing. One is Wayne's World, and one is Sprockets. Now, Sprockets, I loved. Wayne's World, I didn't get at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And, and I was like, I want to do sprockets. So we did sprockets, yeah. right? And so that was the end. And that's, end. When, that's when they dropped the cue cards. Right? Do you remember yeah, that? They, oh, they dropped the cue cards. Mike and I, if you YouTube it, were in a, in a two shot yeah. together and they dropped the cue cards and Mike goes, I, 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 So it's live I, TV I, I, and the guy has the cue cards <laughs> and they were furiously doing rewrites to the cue cards on air. And I'm like, I, like not long ago, I was in government-sponsored housing in Toronto. How the hell did I get here? And then he dropped the cards, and they went in every possible direction. And I saw 15 crew guys just diving and picking up the cards, and they were in the wrong order. So if you, if you YouTube it, it's like, and now we come to the European top five. Uh, <laughs> the first one of five, that's one of five, as you might imagine. Not the fifth one is as follows. So then they were making the movie, and I will never forget this because Lauren called me at home and said, can you come to a lunch or a dinner with Sherry Lansing as the president of this studio and John Goldman to talk about Wayne's so I said, Lauren, I'm on my way to get married right now. And because I was just was, wanted it to be secret. I want secret. to point out that you did take the call. I, <laughs> Mike and I got to, you know, have so much freedom. Usually you got to do 40 takes, and, you know, this was just incredibly cool that we got to have all this freedom. And in fact, I want to thank Penelope, because a lot of times I would do some gar shtick, like, hey, over here, if you're going to spew, spew into this. And Penelope would say, if you can do it 10 seconds faster, I can keep it in the movie. <laughs> the message was faster and funnier. And you remember the time when we, we shot, the one thing that Lauren made me shoot over again was when we were in the club and you had a, 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 a knife and you were, or, or, no, what was it, a, 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 a za stun gun. Z yeah, 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 zapper thing. And Lauren pointed out that you looked a little too aggressive when you did it and just Penelope, you can't do that because it's not funny if somebody's aggressive. Oh, I remember that, yeah. Huh? yeah. Everyone does that to Get Lauren, used to it, Lauren. It's gonna be a whole evening of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And um, the scene was good. I thought it was a, a funny scene. But you had put in my natural laugh as an outtake. Yeah, well, here's the thing. When he goes, did you ever find uh, Bugs Bunny attractive? 
when she you, would play you a girl bunny? Were, you guys were so yeah. tired because yes. we were just, that was the last day of the shoot. Oh, wow. You were so tired and you just had to get back. Uh, Lauren had a, a, a limo waiting outside for you to go from that scene into the car. Right. And you Thank were God so, he wasn't driving. <laughs> <laughs> would never have made it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, you were, I just let the camera run and you guys improv and you guys made that scene so funny. The scene that there was no time for is one of the best scenes in the movie. I always loved Queen. I thought it was amazing that uh, this band had uh, an operatic song that was like nine minutes long. And my brother- We invented their career. I mean, it just- Well, I, I, I was afraid that we were taking a whiz on a Picasso at that point because <laughs> it's such an amazing, you know, song. Um, and uh, when I was a kid growing up, my, a friend of mine had a Dodge Dart Swinger that was kind of like our Mirthmobile, and when Bohemian Rhapsody would come on, everybody had a Galileo. And if you took somebody's Galileo, you got, like, slugged, you know? So that's, that's what I remember. So but the, comes the, from the, real greatest, life. the greatest experience I've had with that was being in a casino in France, which was like, how did I get to a casino in France? Wow. And, Bond, uh, James Bond. They... And I had just done something for Her Majesty's government that yeah. I can't really talk about. Oh, okay. Yes. But let me just say, Let's you're just... welcome. <laughs> um, and uh, I was talking to my cufflinks, which was my two-way transmitter. Mm -hmm. I was going up an escalator, and the, the guy who runs the casino, I don't know what they're called, Grand Chef du Casino, whatever, had seen me and put on Bohemian Rhapsody. This is like about 10 years later. And I got really embarrassed, you know. <laughs> I wanted to get out of there. And there was a big escalator going up. And it was all like super crazy rich people from Luxembourg and the Benelux region and here and there. And when the part goes, G -g -g -gang -gang -gang, I saw 3,000 heads go, da -da 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 -da. <laughs> with people with furs and stuff. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And I, and I was 36 at the time. So doing that for four hours, I, I mean, still it have was a sore neck. Brutal. Yeah, it was brutal. I was I was learning a lot, as well. I mean, they were learning how to make movies that I knew, uh, but I was learning how to be professionally funny, and and you know, that's that's something that, you know, takes takes a lot of time. But I had great masters to learn from. He never ate lunch. That was the weird thing. <laughs> he just did bicep he curls did with his shirt off. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember that. Lunch? I'd be sitting there, I'd be hyperglycemic. Yeah, your... <laughs> I'd be like, <laughs> eating my own hand. And he'd be going, you eat lunch? Yeah, I was ripped underneath that t-shirt. <laughs> Why do you think Austin Powers has so much chest hair, man? I was like... <laughs> to hide the muscles? <laughs> hide all the muscles. <laughs> Canadian fit. My wife's Canadian, so I get it. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and I hadn't really, I mean, I owe Lorne and, and Mike my comedy career. I mean, it does no, the truth. And, and, you know, and today in Parks and Recreation, there's a day where I go by on that set, it's all because of Lorne and it's all because of Mike. And um, haven't seen those checks coming my way lately, but uh, <laughs> when Penelope, you definitely made it better than written, which is always what you hope for. And you created such a great atmosphere on set. Thank you. Thank and it was just, honestly, one of my greatest satisfactions during the making of that film was to see you with the headset. Oh. <laughs> he had to drive in the, in the film, but he didn't know how to drive. So we had, to, license, no, we had to give him, we, got, um, we gave you Sears driving lessons, yeah. right? Yeah, very, yeah, I was um, staying at the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills, and it would be, your car's here, Mr. Myers, and it would be the Sears Driving School with a big, big giant student driver, and I would be driving, and uh, it was this guy from somewhere, but he just kept saying, I'm praying for you, Mr. Myers. <laughs> And we'd pull up to a light, and I was just starting to get known on the show, and people would go, hey, it's the guy. Oh, what an asshole! I was like, an asshole, you're an asshole! Literally, somebody called me an asshole. Wow. I so, had no idea this was going on. Yeah, I, was, <laughs> I would have brought you an apple or something. <laughs>